Welcome to MIG Welding for the Beginner. Here you will find information on how to purchase, set up, maintain, and operate your new MIG welder. Twenty years ago, the only option for welding at home was the 225 amp, 220 volt cracker box welder. These small welders were inexpensive and had lots of power, but they were unsuitable for home use. The only applications for home use were thin gauge sheet metal. The 220 volt cracker box welder did not do this very well. When the smaller 115 volt and 220 volt MIG welders came along, this proved to be much better for home use welding. These small welders had the ability to win small thin gauge sheet metal. This is most commonly found around the home. Not only could they weld thin gauge sheet metal, they were also very easy to operate. Now it is very common to find small MIG welders at home in almost every garage. In selecting 115 volt or 220 volt, if you have 220 volt available, this is the way to go. The 220 volt machine will generally have much more power than the 115 volt. If you were going to do body work, then you will want to pick uh, a machine with a gas solenoid installed. It's always a better idea to buy a complete package when you first buy the machine rather than buying the low-end machine and adding on later. Some of the options in the complete package are not available as add -on. 115 volt machines rely heavily on the flux cord wire to allow them to weld thicker materials. With a as we discussed earlier, it is better to determine whether you're going to use a gas solenoid or not you will want to purchase this as a complete package when you buy the machine. With hard wire and a shielding gas, you will have the ability to weld thinner material. There is also much less smoke involved in the welding process. Also with welding with the shielding gas, there is no flux to brush off and the weld generally comes out looking. If you would like to weld aluminum with your small machine, this is possible with the use of a spool gun although the cost of the spool gun is generally more than the cost of the welder itself they do work very well the only manufacturer at this time producing a spool gun for small MIG welding is Miller Electric they come with adapters that will fit on most MIG welders available today including the link the use of a 115 volt MIG welder for home use was never practical until the scored wire made its way on the scene Flux cord wire gives the little 115 volt MIG welder the ability to weld thicker materials. Not only does it give the small welder the ability to weld thicker materials, it is also very useful in MIG welding outdoors. The breeze from outdoors will normally blow the shielding gas away when you're MIG welding. The use of flux cord wire eliminates the need for curtains and other shielding devices to keep the pesky winds away. In this next section, we will be looking at gas for your hard wire. If you plan on welding steel, stainless steel, and aluminum with your small MIG welder, you will have to buy several types of gas. One option, though, is to buy flux cord wire for your steel needs and argon for your stainless steel and aluminum needs. Although argon works well with aluminum, it does not work real well with stainless steel. When using argon on stainless steel, the penetration is very shallow and the crown is very high. This can be used in an emergency or for just a small job. If you plan on welding stainless on a regular basis, you will want to use the Trimix. When adjusting your gas, your adjustment should be made with your gun trigger pushed on. It's always a better idea to buy a complete package when you first buy the machine rather than buying the low-end machine and adding on later. Some of the options in the complete package are not available as add-ons. If your wire is burning up into your contact tip while you are welding, this to change the liner on your gun, first you'll want to cut the wire going into your gun, pinning it back so that it doesn't unwind off the roll. Then you'll want to loosen nut A on the diagram. Pull the gun out. Loosen screw number B on the diagram. Pull out your liner. 
take your new liner and cut it the same size as the old liner. Stick it in the gun. Secure it back to the feeder box. If you find that the liner is too short or too long, you can twist the nozzle one way or the other and it will make the wire go in or go out. That's a neat little trick. Um, so you don't even have to be very accurate on cutting it to the same length as the old one. If the brake on your wire or roll assembly is not adjusted correctly, you could either cause too much drag on your drive roll motor or not enough drag which would cause your wire to unravel off the roll. To adjust this, just turn the nut in the center of your roll of wire and that will cause your brake to tighten or loosen. You can see by the diagram that pushing the wire causes more spatter and a wider bead. Pulling your wire causes less spatter and creates a narrower bead. In this next section we'll be discussing safety, something that is often overlooked by the home welder. In this next section we will look at your basic selection of helmets for welding. Respirators are one of the most overlooked items in a welder's toolbox. This is perhaps the most important item that should be in there. Welding fumes are very toxic, especially the flux core welding fumes. It's surprising the amount of people who don't buy welding fume respirators. If you are not using a welding fume respirator, you are just asking to have complications later on in life. There are a variety of respirators available. I personally like the single units on the top left hand side. These are the least expensive and least cumbersome to use. All the filtering material is made out of the same product. It is very important to not expose any of your skin to welding radiation. The process of welding generates radiation which is harmful to your skin. So it is important to keep your skin protected. How you choose to do this depends on you. Leather of course works the best and is more expensive than cloth. Although with leather there is less of a fire danger. One of the disadvantages of leather though is that it is hot in the summer. The most common piece of safety equipment is the glove. The most common gloves bought are the common cowhide. These are not only inexpensive but last a long time. If you are working in wet conditions, pigskin is a good choice. They are more comfortable and last longer in wet conditions than a cowhide. If you are generally welding and not doing any material handling, deer or oak is your best choice. Although these are the most expensive, they are also the most comfortable and absorb heat a lot better than cowhide or pigskin.